just waiting here for my PowerPoint to, uh, to show up here. Great. I'd like to begin this morning for, uh, for myself to uh, sort of look at this question. That is, you know, is the pro-life cause a kind of traditionalist preserve. And I think kind of the conventional wisdom for a long time, um, particularly in the media and the academy, um, has been that in fact it is a preserve for traditionally minded religious um, white women. Kristen Luker, who's a sociologist at Berkeley, has done some very, I think, interesting and powerful work on this subject. And her basic claim is that um, the pro-life kind of cause um, is grounded for women um, in a way of life centered around marriage, motherhood, home, and faith. And of course, that's associated in the mind's eye of many with um, less educated white Christian women. But as we've just been hearing, um, in recent years, um, a couple of things are worth noting. One is that in some important respects, a pro-life position, a worldview, has become more popular. Uh, the U.S. has become more diverse, at least in terms of race and ethnicity. And the pro-family movement has become much more accommodating of working women um, than it was 20 or 30 years ago. So these changes uh, lead us to, to sort of consider the following question. That is, so what are the social and cultural sources of pro-life beliefs um, for women um, in America today? And that's what I'm going to be answering um, in this presentation. I'm using data from the General Social Survey, which is a survey that looks at American adults um, every two years. And I've got a subsample here that's representative of 2,700 women ages 18 to 60. I'm looking at the role that, <clears throat> that race, ethnicity, education, religion, work, family status, and gender ideology play in shaping um, women's attitudes towards abortion. Particularly, I'm looking at this outcome. Women are asked in this survey, Please tell me whether or not you think it should be possible for a pregnant woman to obtain a legal abortion if the woman wants it for any reason. And the answer I'm looking at in this particular presentation is it shouldn't be possible. So this is kind of basically um, women in this particular question, in this particular presentation, are basically um, indicating opposition to abortion on demand. We turn first to the issue of race and ethnicity. You can see clearly on this slide right here um, that women who are African American and particularly women who are Hispanic are more likely um, to indicate a kind of pro-life position. They're more likely to oppose um, abortion on demand um, compared to, to white women. But it's also interesting to note here, of course, that across each of these three racial and ethnic groups, a majority of women um, are, are likely to indicate an opposition uh, to abortion on demand. I then turn to the role of education um, in shaping women's attitudes towards abortion. Um, and here the story is much more consistent with the kind of received wisdom. Um, and what's clear obviously here is that less educated women tend to be more pro-life. Um, but it's also interesting to note here that a large minority of college educated women um, are indicating a kind of pro-life attitude here. And of course, these women on the right are probably more likely um, to be involved as, as leaders um, and activists um, in uh, the pro-life movement. Uh, we then turn to the role of religion. And what's uh, clear here, once again, is that there, are, there is a kind of consistent um, story that uh, you know, we, we'd find both you know, in the 70s and in the present that is consistent with the sort of received wisdom, and that's that women who are religious are more likely to see um, the unborn as, as sacred, to see life itself as sacred, and therefore they're more likely to um, take a pro-life position. So there's clearly a link here between, uh, between church going um, and having a more pro-life view when it comes to the issue uh, of abortion. And once again, also, when it comes to kind of the sort of question of a way of life, um, is there a certain kind of, 
of lifestyle that's more conducive towards holding a, a pro-life view, we can see that, uh, once again, consistent with kind of the received wisdom, women who are married with kids um, who are more practically oriented towards marriage and motherhood um, also are more likely to think um, that, um, that the unborn deserve some kind of legal protection. And that makes sense, once again, consistent with Luker's idea that certain ways of life um, are more conducive to a, uh, to a pro-life uh, position. And also consistent with Luker's um, orientation towards this issue of abortion um, is that we see that women who are at home full time are much more likely to espouse a, a pro-life view um, compared to women who are working both part time and especially full time. Um, but once again, it's interesting to me is that women who are working full time, it's still the case that for this group, um, a majority of them are expressing, um, at least on this particular outcome, um, a pro-life position. So even among working women, there are clearly reservations about abortion, and, and most of these women do not want to support um, abortion on demand. But I wanted to kind of, um, in the last two kind of empirical slides, to unpack this a little bit more and to think about you know, how um, work um, and ideology for women interact. And I have two different ideological outcomes that I'm looking at in these next two slides. The first one is looking at kind of attitudes towards um, sort of classic um, gender traditionalism or gender egalitarianism. And what you can see here is that um, women who are gender traditionalists are much more likely, not surprisingly, to be pro-life. And it doesn't matter what their workforce status is. And whether they're working full-time, part-time, or staying at home, they're much, much more likely to take a pro-life position. By contrast, uh, women who embrace a more egalitarian mindset are more likely to move towards a pro-choice vision. And of course, that's particularly so, and you can see in this slide, for women who are working full-time. So there's basically an interaction here between labor force status and gender ideology um, that is consistent with what we would expect, but it also just sort of signals how there is some important diversity um, among the, the sort of crowd of women who are working part-time um, or full-time that I think often goes unrecognized in discussions about working women um, and attitudes towards abortion. So this slide kind of illustrates that there are some um, differences for working women between those who take a more traditional view of gender and those who take a more progressive view. I also wanted, though, to look at this issue of what we might call maternalism. And that is that there's some women who don't have any opposition whatsoever to, to women working and who might believe that men and women should basically share work outside the home, but at the same time take a kind of maternalist view that at least when kids are, are young, when they're infants or toddlers, for instance, it's better to have you know, one parent, usually the mom at home, to, uh, to care for those kids. And you know, so the yellow bar here um, across the slide is actually more common in our society than the uh, yellow bar in the previous slide. Oops. Sorry, we're going. So this yellow bar here um, is less common in our society than this next bar right here. So my point simply is we need to think about not just kind of sort of gender egalitarianism and gender tradition, but also kind of a maternalism, which is more common among uh, women in the U.S. When we look at the link between um, maternalism and different workforce um, statuses, we see once again that there is some heterogeneity um, and the maternalism is associated with a more pro-life position both for women who are working outside the home um, and for women who are working uh, inside the home. So I posed the question at the beginning of my talk here, um, is the conventional wisdom about <clears throat> abortion and women still right? Um, and in some ways, uh, yes, it is still right. Because we can see that you know, in the last decade, basically, that religion, that marriage, that motherhood, uh, that being less educated, that being a stay-at-home mom, and having a traditional gender ideology are all uh, linked to pro-life views in ways that you know, I think many of us would expect. But in some ways, the conventional wisdom is not correct. 
and that is that the pro-life cause is more popular among women of color, a large minority of college-educated women do not support abortion on demand, and a majority of working women also do not support abortion on demand. This brings me to my next slide. I just kind of want to kind of unpack the idea um, that working women and that women more generally are not the same. This is obviously, it's in some ways, a commonsensical idea, um, but I think certainly in the academy, you know, many of my colleagues tend to think about women um, either in kind of as sort of in a monolithic way or in a kind of bipolar way. And if they're kind of open to the bipolar idea, they would kind of see women in the first group um, here, the 30% who are kind of more traditionalist in their orientation and their behavior, um, or in the, in the last group, women who are more work-oriented, both in terms of their, their behaviors um, and, and their ideas or their, their beliefs. But the reality is that most women um, in the West and most women in the United States um, actually fall in between. Um, and Catherine Akeem at the London School of Economics has really kind of championed the idea we need to sort of be attentive to pluralism among women, to acknowledge that women um, are, are different among themselves, and that many women, about 50% of women in the U.S., actually prefer to live what she calls adaptive lives, where they are truly trying to, to balance uh, work and family. They're moving in and out of full-time, part-time work, and even being at home at times when they have kids in the household. Um, and these women, when it comes to their beliefs, their orientation to the larger world, are pulled in both maternalist and work-oriented or, or public directions. Yet it's, it's these women that are often overlooked in the media and in public policy discussions about kind of work-family policies, um, as well as in the academy. And I would like to suggest this morning that it's, it's probably the case that the pro-life cause is most likely to gain ground by targeting this large but largely invisible group of adaptive women in the U.S. This middle group doesn't necessarily see kids or even unplanned pregnancy as a threat to their way of life, but they are oftentimes struggling to figure out ways to combine motherhood, marriage, and work. Indeed, what my own research suggests is that many adaptive women are working more than they would like to um, particularly when there are kids in the household, in order to make ends meet. So my research finds, for instance, that 74% of married moms who are working full-time would like to work less, either part-time or to be at home uh, with their kids. So the bottom line from my perspective is the pro-life cause is most likely to make headway with this adoptive group um, if it embraces policies and candidates that enable women to pursue flexible work-family strategies, especially when these women have kids in the home. That's when they're most interested in, in cutting back on full-time work, for instance, um, and working either part-time or being at home. And I would also suggest to you that if adoptive women feel that their concerns are understood and addressed, they're more likely, I think, to identify with the pro-life cause and with pro-life candidates. And of course, in this particular ele election cycle, I think this is more likely to be the case because I think they're going to be finding more and more candidates who mirror their own life experience and perhaps because of that are more likely to pursue public policies that allow adaptive women to successfully combine their dual interests, their authentically dual interests in both uh, motherhood, marriage, if you want, on one side, and work and public life um, on the other. Thank you. Thank you.